Today we're talking to St Orm City Manager Ian Anderson and himself at the river again where the Saints have gone out of the FA Trophy in the third round qualifying 3-1 away to Welling United. Last week Ian down at Tunbridge you talked about we needed to make changes but we saw your assistant manager Glenn now as a PD leave the club early in the week and today five changes to a team, two debutants and for the first half we look good. Both sides first 15 minutes could have scored goals, looked full of goals. We got one up and 20 and we looked comfortable in that first half. Suddenly two goals in a minute on the hour and it all changed. Yeah, that, that's the, you know, obviously the confidence thing. It hasn't helped with the two goals, but for long periods, David, I thought we played very, very well. We, we bossed, bossed the game. And, and when I say bossed the game, we, we were totally in charge. I felt we probably had four or five really good opportunities to to score, we've hit the goalkeeper on two occasions, we've hit the crossbar, we've scored the goal and got in for three or four other chances and got in good areas and, and played really well. As I said, you know, I was really happy with the way we, we played that first 45 minutes. We spoke at half time about doing the simple things and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And we just overcomplicated that a little bit in the second half, I felt, and we, we, we gave a poor first goal away in terms of giving the ball away in midfield and overplaying and, and they got a corner out of it. They've, they've reacted better to the second goal. And then the goal within a minute, um, putting them 2-1 up, I just felt we lost our way a little bit after that and uh, the confidence sort of went again, but we were still in the game and they go down to 10 men when they're sending off and we've been undone with a, with a really poor third goal and as I've said before, Dean has to take full responsibility because he's tried to read across and he's got done by the fella at the near post area and it's, it's a poor goal from our point of view, so with eight minutes to go instead of us get an opportunity to get back to 2 all. we've ended up losing 3-1 in a game which, which I look back now and we could have quite easily come away with, with, with a victory. You mentioned there's some of the chances we missed. We can think of three chances which were clear, crystal cut, and we didn't even hit the target and that was our downfall. Well, if you look at them and I look back at them and look how many chances they've had, they've probably had four or five chances the whole game. They're two early on and they had one with Moses and Amola late on and they've scored three goals and they've had six chances and scored three. We've probably had ten chances to down score one goal. And that's, that's, the, that's the story at, at, at times of our season when we have our good spells, we're not putting teams to bed. And then when teams have their good spells and we have our poor spells, we're, we're being put to bed. And you know, they're all the things that we've got to try and work on. But it just seems like a, me saying the same old, same old, same old is, is, is every game so far I can say we've had some really good spells and, 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 and should be scoring goals and winning games of football. And uh, then when we have our poor, poor spell, our poor turnaround, we've, uh, we've ended up losing. And, and what, they've got three goals in 30 minutes again today. And, as I say, we've got to look at ourselves again and say, you know, one of the goals, the goalkeeper again, the poor error, but the other two, we, we could quite easily have stopped them if we retained possession of the ball in, in, in the midfield area. We've, we've tried hard things, we've tried things that we simplified in the first half and, and all we did was really ticked it over and it was very good. It was, it was pleasing on the eye um, and played some lovely stuff, played in some great areas, should have punished them more, but we ended up losing the game again. The two debutants, Jamie Fielding and Munash Sandia, are they pleased with their contribution? Yeah, I think they both gave us a really good energy. Um, again, we have to, I think Munash's first game for three weeks and, and Jamie's obviously been on the sidelines at Stevenage waiting. So again, both of them hopefully will get better with the amount of football they play. Um, and obviously we've got you know, games coming up thick and fast now in the league where we've got to start winning these games. So both of them hopefully get a good training session in this week, Tuesday and Thursday, and then uh, hopefully they'll be, they'll be fine by the time we go into next weekend. You mentioned the sending off of uh, Welling's Danny Waldron for a tackle on Solomon uh, Umabuki late in the game. Did you get a clear view of it? Um, to be fair, I, I didn't because it happened so quick, but if you have a look at Solomon's ankle and above his ankle, and then he's, you can see the damage it's done. So. You know, until I look at the video and look at it and probably slow it down, that will tell me whether it was a, was, a, was a poor tackle or not. Uh, the referee obviously felt it was and he's obviously brandished a red card, but as I say, have a look at his ankle and, uh, and you can see the, the cuts he's got on his ankle already. It's funny watching that first half. You could have expected us to maybe be a bit flat after last Saturday at Tunbridge, but we didn't. We, we actually looked quite confident. Yeah, and it's, as I say, David, I keep, I keep going on about our training sessions and, and how we've trained and the boys have been great, but you know we have a we have a weakness that, that as soon as the goal went in, it seems like everybody's head went down, and that's the thing we've got to get out of it. And, and we've said it before that that winning is a winning habit, and it breeds winning. But also losing is a habit, and it breeds losing. And, and we've got to get out of this losing habit because it's too easy to lose a game of football. You know we have to tread very carefully in terms of where we are with the players and in their, their mental state in terms of. Um, the, the confidence side of it and 
you know, but some stage, you know, players have to take responsibility of, of, of their performances. And, you know, as I look back today, and I, you know, I can't be critical. Sam Merson's come back after four and a half weeks out, and I thought that was his best performance for for probably 10 months, 12 months tonight. I thought he was outstanding. It's just a shame, you know, we've got to try and get him back to fit. Joe come on and, and had two great chances. Um, you know, and Sam's created three or four chances for himself. And so, again, you know, I don't want to say it, but, you know, there's been loads of positives, but I said that three weeks ago and I said it four weeks ago and, and then we don't turn up on the next game. So, you know, I'm loathe to really just keep saying how, how we can improve. We have to improve. Um, we have to try and take the positives from today and, and try and build on that. But, you know, we've got to get into habit of keeping clean sheets. We've got to get into habit from stopping the team score. But again, you know, as I've said before, you know, their substitutes at half-time is uh, Anthony Cook and Moses Adamola. Uh, and you know, they're, they're, you're bringing on two, if it's not conference South players, they're conference players. And, and I felt them two change the game in the second half. And I felt they were the difference between us getting something out of today's game and, and losing it. And, and you, you see that with the way Anthony Cook's played 45 minutes and got man of the match. And that tells me a story. It's not even the end of November yet, we're out of all the cups, we're bottom of the table. This must be one of the biggest challenges in your managerial career. Yeah, I've had challenges, as I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to shy away from it. It's one of them that, that I've been used to in terms of uh, boring wood at one stage, but as I've said to you before, when I've taken over at Harlow, Stockfold, Barton and Boreham Wood, we've always been in a situation where we've got to get out of the relegation we're in. You know, as I've said before, if we panic, then panic will set in. If we try and, and teach the players the correct habits and get them into habits of winning games of football and, and try and cut out and nullify the, the mistakes we make because each, each goal you look at, we could probably dissect it and say we could have done better here. The first goal, Solomon didn't have to run with the ball in the middle of the park. Yes, in the final third, we want him to run with the ball, but on, on, on the pitch here in, in, in his own half, he needs to really just try and pass the ball and, and get us ticking it over like we was, we was doing in the first half. We was having loads of touches. And what happens is people try and support him and try and get up level with him. And he gives the ball away. And before we know where we are, it's been put in behind Tom Bender. They've got a corner and we haven't defended the corner. It's the first ball on the corner we, we didn't defend well enough. The second ball is uh, obviously ended up in the back of the net. And then within 30 seconds or even that, you know, we're 2-1 down. So for everything that we did for 60 minutes, which was good, um, it was all undone really with, with a couple of minutes of madness again. Of course, there's one change uh, next to you on the bench. Uh, Glenn Ells, the PD, your assistant, has gone. Been replaced by Chris Winton. Can you tell us about him? Yeah, I mean, Chris has obviously uh, been, been highly recommended to me. Um, and, and after, you know, I had a good chat with Glenn last, last Monday about where we were going in a football club. And I just think I needed, I needed a fresh voice and uh, some fresh ideas, which which he agreed um, and we decided that you know we're going to part company which is sad because I've worked really hard with Glenn for 18 months and you know I've enjoyed I've enjoyed his company I've enjoyed his training um, but sometimes you know we have to change things around just to try and get a reaction from players um, and Chris has been in I mean he obviously he accepted the the role at half past one yesterday afternoon um, and I mind that the fact is he wanted to be with us today uh, a bit strange that he hasn't met anyone doesn't know anyone um, and that's the, the, you know we've got to get used to that. But you know we've now got the Oxford games going to be called off on Tuesday night, which is good. So he can have two good sessions with the players this week. Um, he's got a real energy about him in terms of the way he wants to play. He wants the players to play with an energy. He wants the players to keep the ball. Um, and I think if you look at his record, he's done with Kings Langley and Walton Casual. Both of them are, uh, are clubs that are in a situation where it's, it's hard to um, compete week in, week out. I mean, for Kings Langley to be in the, the Premier Division, it's tough. You know, they've got players there that, that Chris has been involved with and developed and, and make them a strong side in that league. And the same with Wharton Casuals. And, and hopefully what he can bring to the table now will, will be what we need going into the Christmas period. Obviously, we've got... Um, the squad was, was big today uh, in terms of where we are. I mean, Joe Howe has missed out totally from an 17-18 eight, man squad and Taylor Miles is obviously injured. So we have to look at everything we're doing in terms of that side of it. But you know, we've, got to, we've got to make sure that going into next week and the week after and going into this Christmas period now, we've, we've got to start picking up some wins because um, it is tough. Um, I wouldn't lie to you, but I've had situations like this before. And, and you know, when I came in four years ago, whatever it was, three and a half years ago, we, Everybody accepted it, and if we if we accept it now, then you know that's the way the, the club will go. But you know I'm certainly not going to accept it, and we've got to make sure that that we get everybody on board. We try and get everybody in next week again in terms of getting behind the club, and you know 
we can all whinge, we can all moan, we can all sulk at the end of the day. I haven't got time to sulk, as I said to you, it's, it's, it's about being positive. It's trying to get the positivity right through the club in terms of what we need to do. Get the supporters to be positive. And it's tough, don't get me wrong, you know, I've, I've been there, I've been a supporter. I've, I support Arsenal still now, and look at the, the, the doldrums they're going through. So, listen, it, it's all about criticism, it's all about taking it, and it's all about coming back and being stronger for it. And as a football club, we need to come back and be stronger. Um, but we still have to nullify what we're trying to do because you can't play for 60 minutes like we've had today and ended up losing the game 3-1 and that's disappointing from my point. Oxford City drew in the FA Trophy today so as you say Tuesday's game is off so our next one is next Saturday home to Chelsea City you've got a great record against them the last couple of seasons in double both times but although they're not hitting top form yet this season they're going to be tough to beat aren't they down the park? Yeah. As I've said before, and I've spoke to three managers this week, David, and, and, and all three have, have said to me, um, or made statements to me, that this league now is not far off where the National League is. Um, and the National League is like a, a Division 2, and one of them was a National League manager this week. And it's getting tough, and, and the players and the, and, and, the, and the type of player that's coming into this league are very good players, and as I said to you, Anthony Cook and... Uh, and Moses and Amola are both conference conference players and they've come on at half time and for me changed the game. So we have to as I say, there's no problem, we have to respect that and we have to respect it. Um, but it's a tough league and uh, you know we we've got to get players that wanna wanna fight for the football club, we wanna get players that, that run through brick walls for the football club, but also have a discipline about their performances. Um, you know, we've we've had three bookings I think today, but you know, all three had the discipline not to go and get a second yellow card, which quite quite easily have happened. So you know, we have to look at them reasons why. We have to nullify some of the silly little mistakes we're making. We've just conceded three goals in the last five weeks from three kicks from the edge of the box. That's got to stop. It can't be happening. So that means if we have to bring everybody back into the box to, to defend, we have to do that. We can't have one in a wall when the bloke's going to line up because it's not good enough. You know, the book, He's bent it around the wall again and it's gone in the bottom corner where our goalie should be ready to come and save it. He's ready for the cross. And at 2-1 and at at with 8 minutes to go against 10 men, you've got half a chance of getting something out of it. When the third goal goes in, I just think the, the, the whole body language, the mental side of the game has gone out of the game at 3-1. And, and they see the game out quite comfortably, even though Joe still had a couple of chances in that last five or six minutes. The game technically was, was, was gone from our grasp. Lovely, thanks so much Ian. We'll see you next Saturday back at Clarence Park. We say that match against Chelsea City National League South. Kick-off is at 3pm.